Ten years ago, Halo changed the way we play video games. Ten years ago, Halo introduced millions of fans to an incredible new universe and delivered billions of hours of entertainment. That was 10 years ago. This is now. The campaign of the decade, remade and remastered. Combined with classic multiplayer maps, enhanced and updated for Xbox Live. A fully remastered campaign. Co-op over Xbox Live. And seven of the greatest multiplayer maps of all time. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. first established 343, we spent a lot of time thinking about what stories we wanted to tell. Bounding the universe, what's the first story we wanted to tell, what's the last story we wanted to tell within a timeline. The story that 343 was most excited about was Master Chief. It's the 10th anniversary of Halo, we're like, okay, we just we kind of have to do this at this point. It just makes a ton of sense. We are announcing at E3 this year, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. And we're announcing Halo 4, which is the first in the new trilogy of Halo games. I think for most people, Halo 1 is the quintessential Halo. Not only did Bungie nail the control for an FPS on a console, but they also told story in the most compelling way that it's ever been told in an FPS at that time. A couple of years ago when we first started building the recipe for what would go into it, we had to put in a, a huge amount of thought into do we, do we split up the multiplayer from the single player? Do we use the original Halo multiplayer and try and make net code work with that? Do we use the reach code to keep that infrastructure and that ecosystem going? First thing we wanted to do is make it look like a 360 title. How would it look if this game came out today? How would it feel? How would it be different? Sometimes you find little additions that's like, God, I wish if this could have been in there 10 years ago and it looks so right in there right now. And that's what we're looking for and all the changes that we're making. Retouching Halo 1 needed to be a labor of love. The audio, the characters, the levels, the grass, the dirt, the sky, the moons, trying to find a way to reproduce them faithfully, but in a way that looks like it's 10 years later. Literally, you pick this up, the gameplay is identical to what it was 10 years ago, because I mean, that was just so original, it was so new, it was so fresh. It's great to kind of go back to that old gameplay and feel as powerful as you did in both vehicles and with the pistol. The Halo 1 pistol is back. It is still wildly overpowered. Three shots to the head from anywhere on the map will kill anything. It's all in there. If you love flying into the beach on Silent Cartographer and starting in that first big fight, and that's in there. It's looking like 2011. Co-op play was probably one of my favorite features 10 years ago. We have co-op play over live. Anniversary will have stuff hidden in it. It's going to have stuff hidden in it that you know about, like terminals, and you're just going to have to find them yourself. I'm also excited about the stories we're telling in the terminals and then having achievements that's long overdue. Being able to switch back to the classic on the fly it's just going to be kind of a magical experience. You hit a button at any point in the campaign, you flop back, and that's how the game looked 10 years ago. It's just great from a history standpoint to just look at it and go like, oh wow, my god, this is, this is the game I remember. It feels like a modern game. It feels like an FPS that came out yesterday. It does not feel 10 years old. So we didn't touch the gameplay, but it's amazingly beautiful now. You look up in the sky and you see the halo ring and you see the mountains and you're like, I've never been someplace like this before. And I feel that again now, seeing it. I mean, I feel it like I did 10 years ago. The beauty of this is this time on Xbox Live, you can just get, get back together with the same old crew and the same old posse, and, and I think virtual pizza parties are going to be the order of the day. It's super exciting to finally be able to talk about what we've been working on for the last years. Just reliving 
the Halo 1 campaign, for most people, the overall experience is going to be pretty incredible. We get Halo, we respect Halo, we appreciate it, uh, and we're going to do right by it. What we're going to see at E3 is just going to be a first taste of that. I'm looking forward to being able to dish out a little bit more in the months to come. At PAX this August, we have Halo Fest, where you'll hear more about Halo 4, and you get hands-on play with Halo Anniversary, both campaign and multiplayer. That's going to be a, a blast and a hell of a way to finish the summer. working months and months to make Halo Fest come off. It's actually been a shot of adrenaline every day I show up to get a chance to meet the fans, talk to them. It's just so much fun. The passion is infectious. We're gonna see you all here right early tomorrow morning. Greetings, Reclaimers. This is 343 Guilty Spark. Welcome to Halo Waypoint and to Halo Fest 2011. I don't say often that I'm in heaven, but I am in heaven right now. As soon as I heard they were going to have the ultimate Halo fan fest, Halo fest, I had to come. There's like an incredible amount of stuff to see and do. It's a testament to how much cool stuff there has been built up over the last 10 years for Halo. I've definitely played all the games. I went through each map. I played Firefight a bunch of times. People love the new maps. People want to play on all the new maps. They, they love it. They actually really love the TU as well, with the Zero Bloom and the Anniversary Slayer. So everyone's just really excited. No one's upset. Everyone's happy. It's awesome. You guys threw an awesome VIP party the other day. I ran into people that I haven't seen in like six years. It sort of brings back all these memories of the, the good old days. Our trip began kind of where everything all started and it only Amazingly enough, got better from there. It's really nice to see that they're taking that mantle of community and bringing it with them. I love today's RVB panel. Save the best for first, huh? That's cool. Yeah, that's right. The panels that are exactly what we're interested in. I mean, community and you know the toys and the developers, and you just you touch on every aspect of this universe that we absolutely love. Everyone from 343 is here, and that's always been great about the Halo community. That the actual people show up. It's really nice to put a put a face to that name and, and uh, meet all the friends that I've been making for you know the past couple of years. My favorite panel definitely was the Halo 4 panel. That was awesome. My mind freaked out and my mouth got down. The uh -huh. franchise development director 343. It was really exciting that we could share this weekend with the fans as part of the 10th anniversary celebration and kicking off the next 10 years. Well, you guys were fans before you were creators, and so I think that you guys come from a really, really good place. So yes, definitely optimistic and, and confident in what you guys can do. Even my mother loves Halo and doesn't like video games just because she likes this new sci-fi universe. It's much, much, much more than I expected it to be, and it's been an incredible several days. I I'm, I'm exhausted and I'm thrilled to have been here. Industries, Kirkland, Washington. There you go. I remember sitting down in a conference room and watching this purple and blue FPS game on console and scratching my head and saying, was this really going to be it? Was this going to be the thing that defined Xbox? And obviously, 10 years later, it, it proves that that was the kind of the seminal moment for us, the beginning of Halo as an Xbox game. Not only did Halo 1 bring the FPS to the console, it also brought story. Cortana. I've spent the last 12 hours cooped up. The combination really established sort of a new genre, if you will, of FPS 
console story expectation. Halo did a lot of really conventional storytelling through cinematics and cool voice acting and great music, obviously. But I think some of the storytelling that happens in Halo that's most inspiring to me is the storytelling that happens through the environment and the sandbox. While you were hit with all this great fiction that you could really kind of delve into and try to understand more about, at the same time, you could just pick it up and play. All of that kind of came together to make a game that had not necessarily was completely different than what previous shooters had done, but got all of its individual formulas so excellently perfect. You had this incredible first-person shooter experience that I don't think anyone had ever even come close to before it. Halo was the beginning of me playing console games with my friends, and that's still how I always think about it. I think people have been asking for a remake of Halo 1 since Halo 2 was announced. I like to go all the way back to the day that Xbox Live came out and the demand for Halo 1 and the ability to place a co-op over Xbox Live kind of started and it built up over the years and over the years. It was the perfect timing since the 10 year anniversary was coming up. It occurred to us that there's this entire generation of people who never played the original game. If you're an 18 year old gamer today, you were eight when Halo came out. We did due diligence on a number of partners. The number one requirement was that it didn't impact gameplay at all. You have a classic. You have something that's just magical, right? If you go and tinker with it, you're going to lose that magic. <laughs> what we really needed was someone who could work with our existing physics and gameplay engine. Saber popped up really quickly. And they're like, yeah, we can do this. We can make the game look like a current generation game. And we can do it by using the original Halo 1 engine. The gameplay in Halo 1 is what's called deterministic. In other words, if you feed the engine the same input, the game will behave in the same way. And if you can apply this principle across a network, you can have two game worlds completely in sync. So rather than simulate Halo's original gameplay or Halo's original physics, we're able to actually use them completely. So the car is nice and shiny, but the engine is fairly old, but so we have to make sure that it all kind of fits together. And then we have to speed up the engine to make sure it works in today's world. We've done some deliberate things. The library is easier to navigate now. We use lighting and textures to make it a little bit simpler. The pillars are covered in holograms on one side, or they're more decorated on the other side. From what we've noticed, it actually seems to help people that aren't familiar with the library figure out where they're going. Truth and Reconciliation is one of the best examples I can give. If you come to that first interaction and then you make your way towards a cliff, you can look up and see this unbelievable skybox. And so having all these updated graphics has really made the game, to me, just more immersive. I still remember the first time I saw some Someone switched to graphics. I didn't know that was actually going to be a feature until I saw someone do it. In a lot of ways, it was a very, very fine balancing act. Because again, we're running all the original Halo 1 animations, so it's the original Halo 1 skeletons for those characters needed to be rebound into the updated meshes that we had brought over from Halo Reach and from Halo 3. For example, the Elite actually has an elongated neck, so they're a little bit more squat and compact. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. Welcome back, sir. We'll have you battle ready stat. Master Chief's iconic. And he has to look like a hero and he has to look just right. Chief's armor was, was, that was a tough process. We went back and forth on that for a long time. Well, originally we were using a Mark V armor that's built in the multiplayer component of Reach. We just kept coming back and it just didn't look like Master Chief. The first stuff we put out around E3, uh, I think the forum reaction was instantly, Chief looks wrong, his visor's too big, the color's all wrong. Some people thought we were doing it intentionally as a retro. If you saw the original uh, Chief from like 1999 era, he had a really tall, very matte, reflective helmet. It actually looked similar to that. The thing about this group working on this project is that we are very, very passionate about getting this right. We iterated on that probably six, seven months before we finally got a final Chief's armor that I think looks awesome. One of the number one asks that we had for a Halo remake was we want co-op over live. The original Halo 1 campaign experience had already been designed for cooperative play. You notice when you're getting out of the initial cryotube, there's actually two cryotubes for the for cinematic. It definitely creates another challenge for us when you're playing with somebody else, but we obviously wanted to support that. The code base was built uh, 10, if not 15 years ago, so we had to figure out how this code base is structured, how it was designed. We had a lot of people work really long hours to make it happen and to really code it ultimately from scratch. It's pretty seamless, so you'll go into the campaign lobby and there you'll see your friends who are online playing the game. You fire off an invite to a friend and they'll be able to join you. Allowing you to play what was originally a split-screen cooperative campaign experience now across line.
Skull on. Classically, skulls in Halo tend to affect behavior, which means the AI needs to support those behavioral changes. How do we create something that alters gameplay? Well, one of our fundamental tenets is keeping gameplay the same. Skulls are one of the tools we're giving the player that if they do want to change their gameplay experience a little bit, they can do it. The benefit to this is that most of these skulls are brand new. You've never seen them before, you never played them. Like Malfunction, where random HUD elements disappear whenever you respawn. Boom is a skull that increases the radius of explosions, making explosions more dangerous both for the Covenant and for the player. That in combination with something like Grunt Funeral means that you become very afraid of grunts. We must continue this way, please. There are a few features that got into the game that turned out better than we expected, and 3D is probably the number one. It was, it was unexpected, it was a bonus, and I don't see 3D very well, but it really worked for me. So it's, for some reason it just pops in Halo in a way that it doesn't in other games or even movies. Yeah, I'd say the uh, feature that surprised me the most was Connect. So we've got a number of voice commands throughout the course of the game. Things like grenade, reload. At a point during the game when you're playing, you can say analyze and this mode comes up where you can almost capture items. So you move your cursor over, say, an elite or a grunt. And in the library, you can go in there and see the things you've captured, move the model around in 3D. And it gives you a bit of a breakdown and explanation of what those characters are. For me, when I think about Halo, I think about looking around and just the scope and the scale of everything. This is the game that started it all, and people can really dive in and play and remember what it was like to play it 10 years ago, and if you didn't play it 10 years ago, you can see what it was like 10 years ago. It's the quintessential walk down memory lane with a much better visuals. Ultimately, the thing you learn is it doesn't just look modern, it feels completely modern. A completely remastered campaign, great additional features like co-op over live, skulls, Terminals, 3D, Connect, and multiplayer. Once you see it for yourself, it, it, I don't know, really, it's a pretty awesome experience. There's a lot of stuff in there for $40. We're actually really excited about the fact that there's so much there and it's a real smorgasbord of stuff for people who enjoy Halo. One of the best values that you'll find this holiday season by far. We have much to discuss in this. I've been away far too long. You have been away far too long. What we wanted to do with the Terminals and Anniversary is evolve them a little bit. But we also wanted to add some fiction, because that was the only thing that we weren't really touching. They've been done a couple times in a couple different ways so far. Animated text in Halo 3, audio file with slideshow presentations as they were done in ODST. We wanted to make sure that we could do them in a unique way, and so we worked with the sequence group to do more than just a motion comic. Really, it's more like an animated short. Warning. By order of Ecumen Council. Kind of settled on the story that talks a bit about 3 for 3 Guilty Spark. Guilty Spark in the game is this character you don't really get to know too well. I mean, he's there and you form a bond with him, but at the same time, you don't know his story. You don't know his backstory. What was could never be again. That's been the fun thing. It's like, what the hell's he been doing for 100,000 years? Other than what he says aloud, you never really understand what he's thinking. This was kind of an opportunity to explore that. We just did the voiceover with Guilty Spark with Tim Dadabo. At one point in the session, he just said that he thought these scripts were really cool because he was able to learn some things about Guilty Spark, about him, that he had never known before in all of his time with all the games before. And that, to me, was a pretty good sign that we're putting together some interesting new stories that we're adding some cool new dimensions to the universe. It also runs parallel to the original event, so it doesn't change them in any way, but it will help you to have greater context and a greater understanding and hopefully a greater appreciation of why you're in this place and what you're doing. We try to make them fit very naturally within the existing spaces rather than create new out-of-the-way spaces for terminals to exist. Even if you're not familiar with Halo, and perhaps especially if you're not familiar with Halo, this will give you some insight into the history of our universe and some of the characters that are involved in it. All preparations are complete for my installation. There's just so much that's been established. It's actually worked out so well for us to, to build upon that and work with that. We felt it would be an interesting opportunity to help tie the story in. So with the terminals, you'll get a couple sneak peeks of some things that we're thinking for Halo 4. The familiar shape awaits. Halo. Home.
Halo. My maker's most horrific and devastating weapon. But this ring is not just a weapon. It is my home. And your presence here is not a coincidence. You were brought here to serve a purpose. But first, you must see the truth. Learn all that took place in my maker's absence. Are you ready, Reclaimer? This is how my story begins. I think back to San Diego Comic-Con when we were doing a panel and we were just setting up and you know, that monk chanting started. The audience just went nuts. Sitting at the panel thinking like, yeah, wow, we've got some really iconic music on our hands. That music was very, very key to a lot of the emotion of the game and a lot of people's memories of the game. You see a still from it and you hear the music or you hear the music and you see yourself playing the game back in that day. I didn't want to lose sight of that. I wanted the music to speak for itself and just give it um, the red carpet love letter and bring all the resources that we could bear to bringing it back. I really wanted to take what I had learned on Legends and to work with a partner that I had just had great success with in Pure Mind and Paul Lipson. I started formulating my plan of how to approach it. Halo is really near and dear to my heart. Shipping the original audio as it was when they were doing so much work on remastering the visuals wasn't going to cut it. And this was the challenge. We wanted to maintain our reverence and DNA of the original score, but we did need to extend. What we wanted to do was enhance what was there and bring to life with modern production techniques and vastly increased resources over the original. There's a lot of choices out there, but I was a big proponent of Skywalker. They have tailored everything to the pursuit of capturing an orchestra. Skywalker is a great place to record, first of all, because we have a fantastic staff, but also the room is a wonderful sounding room that can be tuned to accommodate any kind of music. To me, it just represents the absolute state of the art, and it's a perfect partnership for Halo Anniversary. If you like the way music was spotted in the original at a particular point, it's going to be the exact same piece. It's just going to be done with a 75-piece orchestra at Skywalker Sound. The guys did a great job on reorchestrating the original work. There was no pre-existing MIDI audio files to work with, and all we had was literally the original in-game file. We had to meticulously listen and transcribe every note. You're starting from something that's already finished, and something that's iconic, something that's beloved. There's a lot of things that are exact, and there's a lot of things that are adaptations and in the spirit of the original. Synthesis was all done on gear that was available in 2000 and 2001. We actually have a couple of guys on the team who are encyclopedic in their knowledge of old gear. They've been able to go back in, listen to what's there, find the exact synth, the exact patch, tune it to exactly how it sounds, and then re-perform it for this. The power of an orchestra and the way scores are being composed now has really raised the level of expectation because it's much more of a real, tangible, visceral experience than it was in the past. At the heart of the music and at the heart of the story is Marty O'Donnell's original creation and it's, it's very respectful of that, but yet it still sounds new. You do have the option in the menu to just play the game to that original soundtrack, so if you do want to hear that music exactly the same as it was 10 years ago, you can still do that. We've got fans making this music, which means that when we are adapting this music, we're doing it from the standpoint of we play it, and we've been playing it for years, and we're just going to apply our sensibility as both a fan and as artists. For decades, we've battled an alien enemy we do not understand. Unprovoked, it brought our civilization to its knees and forced us into hiding. And now, chased into the darkness, we have one chance for survival. 
One chance that carries the hope of our entire species. And has led us... here. All I need to know is did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. We are leaving this ship, Latour, and engaging the Covenant on solid ground. We're entering the ring's atmosphere in five. You sure you wouldn't rather take a seat? We'll be fine. They believe that Halo is some kind of weapon, one with vast, unimaginable power. The flood is spreading. If we activate Halo's defenses, we can wipe them out. And that's exactly what Halo is designed to do. Wipe the galaxy clean of all sentient life. There is no choice. We must activate the ring.